Alex Answer here, July 5th, 2019, coming to you from rural Colorado. So let's talk about what effects of the eclipse did we experience within ourselves as well as the new moon and what did we see taking place in the world? Often I'm, I'm framing things around the solar activity influence over human consciousness for better or for worse during the solar maximum period as well as the solar minimum period and looking a little deeper at some of this information highlighting the the four components of the solar cycle and so I'm also noticing in myself I've written this down I've shared this with you the personal cycles within some of you may also notice the cycles within so ultimately I'm trying to help the most people with this information about the Sun and to not make it political and to not like lock it down into like one thing into like the box of one way of looking at it okay so I don't go deep into astrology but I respect the work that other people do that go into the the, the star signs the Sun signs uh, of the various 12 I'm a Pisces and so some of the things that have been put out there for Pisces apply to me some things I think don't but then there are also some ways in which we're all affected by a similar change in our world regardless of your sign and so that's where I focus this the conversations that I have about the uh, the effects of the solar cycles but what about the effects of the eclipses specifically when the Sun is covered by the moon and then when the eclipse is over and there's the aftermath because I noticed certain types of emotions within on the ramp up to the moment of the actual eclipse which is around like between 1 and 3 maybe my time and so the after math seemed to be something in which there was a lot more energy there's a couple uh, podcasts that I recorded on patreon once for free check it out join if you can also another video for VHX there's gonna be a new upload there also a 29 minute upload discussing one additional tip that I learned with regards to psychic self-defense uh, building up one spiritual base and recentering so I'm going to be moving forward on that type of content there while here on YouTube bringing in this information about the sun uh, and going forward on that while steering away from other distractions because we need to be at our strongest during this time and think about the things that matter the most. So with regards to the eclipse, of course there was the aftermath to the unfortunate violence in Portland. It's also said that the eclipses bring out certain types of extreme behavior in humans. Are we seeing this in the collective? Because I also think there could be actions on one level, but also the emotional reaction from the public or the entire society. And now we live in a society where we're all interconnected on social media and we have these programs that may amplify the focus. But could there be something to collective emotional expression and thought? For example, think about the anomaly of a storm going one mile into Portland that's not normally seen a tornado that caused major damage to some homes within a day of uh, a person being beat down by a group of people. The odds weren't even fair and he was sucker punched. And so I've been discussing in recent years and it's not necessarily fun to do so and as an independent I see this unruly behavior in our society and there are trajectories trajectories that we can see where things are getting worse and they're not getting better and so a lot of us are asking ourselves what are things going to be looking like in the coming years and I try to do this from a perspective other than the sky is falling and other than a perspective that we're all uh, uh, collectively shifting our consciousness in a positive way I'm not going to say that because I don't believe in that I think that you know, and then on the slides in my solar flare presentation made in 2013, I start with this point. We got to go beyond the absolute extremes of our worlds being destroyed or our worlds about to be saved. We go through these cycles. And there are cycles of people waking up to the things that matter, and there are cycles apparently to people going to sleep. And we're affected different ways by these changes. Going back to the eclipse and looking at it as a potential case study of us being dramatically affected by solar activity when the moon covers it. And then the moon is no longer covering it. And then there's like this after effect. I remember also the intensity regarding a number of things back in 2017 
around August, September. And uh, here we are experiencing this total solar eclipse. One additional thing that I can bring up now that some of you are probably seeing in the news that Southern California saw the largest earthquake in 20 years. In that particular area, it was on the coast, it was more inland near the Mojave Desert. That's an interesting place that I haven't visited. But my imagination does often go to the Mojave Desert. What type of off-grid communities are there? What type of history is there in the Death Valley? Because we hear so much about an overpopulated Southern California, but here we have this desert that's not very inhabited. And uh, there's, there's a whole world of intrigue surrounding that. And I think various groups, from maybe the really strange ones to maybe cool things, or cool groups, fascinating ones at least, uh, have called the Mojave Desert or Death Valley home at one point or another. And uh, the idea of having such a large space outside of such a dense population center is fascinating to me. Just like outside of Denver, Colorado, you have some of these areas that are not densely packed to where you can still connect with nature and that natural magnetism. Because that's the thing that people forget, the, the nature, the natural world without the cell phone towers and without the 5G, now without all these radio waves flowing within, has its own magnetism that isn't infected by the disharmonic frequencies. Also think about the smart meters, also think about how many different cell phones right, might be in any given place, say a shopping mall for example, and how that truly does affect the human aura. I had to go somewhere to get on a landline to do the interview with the radio show and my energy field felt very affected by leaving my natural habitat in nature to somewhere where there was a landline. So when I go back into the city and I'm around that, it's almost it's like a zapping type of bug zapping type of zzz energy to the lampposts and just the, the, the basic energy that's out there in the modern city. So Southern California is being hit with an earthquake. It was a 6.4, they saw like an aftershock today of a 5.4. And then we also see a swarm of earthquakes in Yellowstone. So this could be very much a natural part of uh, the process of when we go through certain events, eclipses, increased solar activity, the effect on the planet can be seen. It's not something that's generally endorsed or taught in mainstream school. In a, in a world that was more evolved, public schools would be teaching more about the solar effect over human consciousness. Okay, and I, I do believe that this type of regrounding, our focus, right, is something that is healing in a world that has so much darkness. It's not about a particular religion either, even though we do see many uh, solar-based religions over time, and I have not studied all of them. Certainly the sun, the solar cycles, are used against us by the powers that be. The powers that be have been defined as even beyond that which we think is controlling the top of the pyramid. Okay, there, there's something above the level of control that we can see, touch, hear, and sense. And so the solar cycles are used against us. For the most part, it's a collective that's not fully aware of how powerful we do become during certain periods. This is why I believe, right, certain techniques of mass media mind control, certain events are manufactured during key parts of the cycle or in and around eclipses or other celestial events. It's based on a belief that their luck will be magnified. Meanwhile, down the ground, there are various levels of law of attraction rituals that humans engage in, but what's the most mindful way to use our skills? Our ability to create for ourselves? Is it just merely about creating materialism and, and trying to enforce our will to be done? Or is there still like a bigger step that we as a collective group of humans need to make to become more humble before the Creator? To where the, the skills and abilities that we have to create things and to affect our reality are used for the highest good. You see, because there can be the world meditations where people bring themselves together, connect to the earth and connect to the elemental forces, connect with the creator together. Now that's important as well as other things, but specific meditations to create specific outcomes by a morally sound population could affect certain key outcomes, I do believe. 
I mean, we could be literally in a national emergency where there is uh, certain things taking place like the worst case scenario. And certain areas in the United States, maybe certain coastal towns and regions that may have dealt with their darker side or shadow self a little bit more directly that are trying to affect positive change and not trying to bury it under the carpet. I think that they're going to be more lucky in a worst case scenario and maybe certain things can come to their aid. I believe God can work through the elemental forces, through the sun, through the water, through the air, through the earth. And I think that separating God's will from those things um, is, uh, is not a path that I want to take. So that's something I want to recenter on for those that are faithful as they start approaching these times. Right now I'm recording this video on church property. This feels like the most grounding place today to deliver this video message to you. Again, there are additional videos that I'm putting out there in the day and age in which I'm not seeing anything back from YouTube anymore. In this current adpocalypse, I'm now putting out content elsewhere and also looking to the universe for guidance. It's said that we should look for guidance during difficult times, whether they're financial, whether they're spiritual, whether they're psychological, right? That we ask ultimately for guidance from the creator that we don't necessarily get stuck down into the specifics of what it is that we think that we want. What it is that we think that we want. You know, there's a very important expression out there, be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. One of the things that I've got the opportunity to realize is how much I have been creating for myself all of these years. The thing is like, how often are we conscious of it and the power of our words? And so that's why I'm focusing this channel, moving it forward with the solar sciences, that we can learn literally how to better use the energy that's coming in. Reminding people the importance of grounding the center of the earth, attaching a grounding cord from your root chakra to the center of the earth, and also bringing the cosmic energy and connecting it down through the back channels to the root chakra and bringing that energy up. There's a number of different techniques, right, that you can learn on the internet. The idea is to believe in your tools working. I believe there's a reason why they use social media and the internet to put out certain dark images and manufacture events to alter human consciousness. There was an interesting video that I saw. The channel Higher Self is often mirroring the work of others, highlighting for others really interesting spiritual commentaries on the changing energies. And I'm interested in facts. I'm not interested in things that are simply made up to make us feel good. And so I'm not a typical person put into the box of XYZ because of the abstract level of uh, videos, ideas, and knowledge that I have. It's not inside the box. It's not limited. I look at things that are uh, world events that a lot of people in spiritual circles would rather not look at. I've talked about the victims of war for many, many years. I've also looked to the Creator for more guidance and wisdom as to the most important things to focus on during these times and to step back from things that are a little more divisive in order to help the most people. I'm not interested in projecting out certain messages at this time that's going to be divisive. Even if people in the media are feeding on these things, I can step back. This is what I talked about on VHX. I did a recent analysis on what I see happening in Portland and the forces that be running both sides against each other. And as an independent, I'm making that analysis and I'm going, this is building, this is building, this is building, just like I said, it wouldn't kind of tend to continue to build. So here we are now seeing many of our concerns coming to fruition and we're asking ourselves, how do we step back from that madness and have the deepest spiritual experience that we need to have? You know, there's a part of me that does crave community and travel and maybe being in another state, literally my bare feet on the beach. But if the universe and the creator think that thinks that I, or believes that we're where we need to be, where I'm at is where I need to be, right in middle America. It doesn't feel right to be in Portland, Seattle, Los Angeles, reaching for the golden ring, reaching for stats, new views, new connections. There could be fun in Alex Ansari traveling around, right? But there's not major signs from the universe that that's the path for me. And so, you know, we have a lot of these things that are pre-programmed within us as to what we should be doing by a certain time, right? But that's not necessarily the things that are um, ultimately destined for us. Many previous actions that we have already done may lead us to a certain place. And there could be a part of us that may want to break out of that pattern 
and start taking steps to completely undo that. And before we go and do that, undo what we've done, right? We need to make sure that's the right thing for us. And so there's gonna be impulses that people have with regards to moving, new relationships, jobs, because of the new eclipse, whatever your, your sign. And ultimately, the biggest change has to come within. Something maybe has to move within. A new job within. Not everything regarding moving relationships are literal. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not always literal. Although a lot of those videos on YouTube almost make them kind of literal, but they're not always literal. The changes are manifesting in our lives in different ways, and you can see it in the newswire. It's also one way of bringing in the chi. That's a basic qigong movement. You visualize yourself grounded into the center of the earth and make this habitual, something that is no longer foreign because meditation and psychic self-defense and other similar principles will become less fringe of an idea after 5G is rolled out. Uh, you know, I was in 2012 saying in my video series that I believed in the short-term future as in a six-year cycle by 2016, 2017, there would be a whole plethora of information about protecting your mind on the internet, easily available. You can even see Coast to Coast AM has more programs than they used to on psychic self-defense. Why is this a focus that's coming into view? More people are having issues. Okay. More people are being influenced by toxic elements of social media and certain types of videos. It's all around us. And so may this be a powerful time for you and me. Highlighting the eclipse, major earthquakes, major changes, how some people are responding in not necessarily the most positive way by fighting in the streets or attacking innocent people. We can see how some people are acting out within days of the eclipse. But on a internal level, I believe that some of us are actually having breakthroughs. The higher self channel was highlighting a video on uh, the Schumann resonance. And the woman was saying that it rose after the eclipse to 50 hertz. That's probably the most in detail, important detail and one to close on in this video today. If there's any truth to this, right? So I'm passing on the allegation that we have possibly seen a major jump. And this would be in line with the recent earthquake. Uh, this would be in line with the unrest and also uh, a lot of uh, enhanced media activity, a lot of emotionalism uh, regarding the many things that are taking place, also shootings. So as above, so below. My goal is to help the most people through my YouTube channel here going out. It's one thing to talk about the problem and targeting and things of that nature. It's also another to bring in the element of nature, to talk about where it's missing in our lives. And that includes an understanding of the solar cycles. If we know that we are at our most powerful during certain periods, aren't those the periods to really write that book and let it out and make that change? Make that change within, have that victory over the lower self in that moment to where somebody heals some aspect of themselves or their body with their own mind during a key period in the solar cycle. See, these are where I'm attempting to advance the ideas. I'm Alex Hansery, signing off.